Hi everybody, welcome to this episode of Android DTV. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you about my experience having a colonoscopy and just like some tips and tricks that I learned from doing it. I had never had one before and I was very anxious and very nervous about doing it. Um, so I just wanted to kind of pass along what I've learned just in case there's other people who maybe like if you're feeling very nervous about doing it, um, what I did to kind of just help make the process bearable. Um, I have done some other videos on this channel many years ago about like other GI tests and experiences that I've had that I'll try to link somewhere. I recently just did a video about a stool test as well if you um, are interested to go check that out. But in this video specifically we're going to be talking about colonoscopies. So first I'm going to tell you the things that I think you should purchase, like things that you're going to want to purchase to do this colonoscopy. So the day before your colonoscopy is actually your prep day and you have to be on an all liquid diet for pretty much the whole day. So you're going to want to buy a lot of clear liquids and your doctor will tell you or the colonoscopy center where you're having it done will tell you specifically what you can have and not have. But generally you would want to buy things like Gatorade, Powerade, Smart water, lemonade, apple juice, white grape juice, jello, chicken or beef broth, and ginger ale. And if you're going to buy things like Powerade or Gatorade or that kind of thing, um, you're usually not supposed to have anything that's red or purple just because um, any of the like the dye that's used in red or purple drinks, um, if it shows up in your colon, it can make it look like there's bleeding. So you don't want to have that because then um, it also messes with the results and they're going to think that there's like bleeding in there when there's not. And then you'd have to do the test over and everything. So um, that's definitely not something that you want to have to do just because you like did the prep wrong. This isn't totally necessary, but I did buy adult diapers because I found it particularly helpful just because um, like if you're worried about having accidents, like trying to get to the bathroom in time when you're doing the prep or especially like more especially at night when you're sleeping, if you're worried about like having an accident in the middle of the night, not being able to get to the bathroom in time or most especially if um, on the way to the appointment, like depending on how far of a drive it is to the appointment, because you do have to do prep the morning of as well. Um, so if you're like concerned about having an accident on the way there, it just kind of gives you some, like I honestly didn't like have it. I was worried about it. I didn't have any accidents in the middle of the night or on the way to the appointment, but it just put my mind at ease knowing that I had kind of like a safety blanket. Like if that's something that you're worried about, nothing wrong with having adult diapers if you're concerned about that. I would also buy like really good quality soft toilet paper. So like I normally don't buy the Charmin toilet paper, but for this I did. So like the really good soft toilet paper just because um you are going to be going to the bathroom a lot of times and like eventually after you're you know rubbing down there like after more than a few times it really starts to feel painful so um i, I actually after a point you aren't even going to want to use toilet paper because another thing that people recommended was getting wet wipes which is another thing that i say you should get is wet wipes to wipe with instead of toilet paper just because after a while it does get very painful and to go along with that too like diaper rash cream or vaseline um and people say to apply it before you start doing the prep because it kind of just helps um, when you start having bowel movements because you are going to start having them very frequently and you're probably not going to be able to really um, apply it then. I actually tried that and it didn't really work for me that well. So, I mean, I don't know how it's going to go for you, but it's definitely worth it to um, try to just, you know, apply some diaper rash cream or something beforehand and using wet wipes instead of toilet paper just because like even after a while, like no matter what you use after a while, everything becomes painful. So there's probably always so much you can do, but it's definitely like you just want to make it as bearable as you possibly can. I would also get reading material because you are going to be in the bathroom a lot. So you could bring your phone in with you. I don't know if I'd recommend that just because of like from a sanitary um, perspective or like a hygiene perspective. Um, but like I brought in a lot of magazines with me. So like something like magazines or even like a book or something if you want. Um, but you are going to be in the bathroom pretty frequently. So like I would definitely, you know, like have something to occupy yourself with. I would also buy lemons because a big tip that really helped me. And this is what I found out online, like when I was doing research online beforehand to figure out like how am I going to do this? Um, depending on the prep that you have to have, like if you can just do a prep like Miralax mixed in with Gatorade, then you'll be fine. But if they, if your doctor has prescribed for you like a traditional prep, they usually taste really, really bad. And so um, a tip that I found online that really helped with this to like mask the bad aftertaste is to have a slice of lemon after drinking it. 
um, it just kind of helps with the aftertaste, I guess. So if this is the kind of prep that your doctor has prescribed, I would definitely get some lemons to slice up beforehand. And the other thing that you're allowed to have as part of the all liquid diet is hard candies. So if that's something that you think that you'll want, then hard candies are permissible as well. Like I said, your doctor might prescribe different preps. Um, some use a traditional prep like Go Lightly or Soup Prep, and others might use just Miralax mixed in with a drink of your choice with Ducalax, or sometimes now they come in a tablet that you can swallow. So there's all different kinds of preps out there. This one, I happen to use soup prep. So my tips might be more relevant if you're having soup prep as opposed to the, these other kinds of preps. So specifically about soup prep, um, I was really worried about what it was gonna taste like. Like I couldn't really find a good description online of what it was going to taste like. So what it ended up tasting like was, I, I will say, I don't know if it tasted quite honestly as bad as I was expecting. Like I've had worse things I think before, cause like I said, I've had to do other GI tests. I've had to do a like a barium swallow before. Um, I had to do an MRI with contrast and I had to drink like straight barium. It was really, really disgusting and they didn't give me any kind of chaser or anything like that. So I would say, honestly, those things were worse than this. So it didn't taste as bad as, bad as I was expecting, but it is pretty bad. I don't know why they have to make it taste so bad. I don't know why they can't make it taste better, but um, I would say Suprep tastes like a bad diet lemon lime soda, and instead of adding sugar, they added lots of salt. That's what it tasted like to me. Like I said, your doctor will give you specific instructions about like what to do, but in general, they'll usually recommend that you cut out things like nuts, seeds, or high fiber foods um, about seven days prior to your procedure, just because like anything that has a lot of fiber that's really hard to digest, it'll just make it that much tougher on your colon when you're trying to cleanse it. The thing that people are so tempted to do the day beforehand is they think because they're not gonna be able to eat for a whole day that they're like, oh, let me just eat like this gigantic meal and, uh, that's not what you want to do at all. Like don't eat like red meat or things like that. For proteins, I would say either like plant-based protein if you can, or things like chicken, turkey, like all like white, white meat. Um, yeah, like white meat, lean proteins, that kind of thing. Um, you do not want to be eating things like red meat and like hamburgers and things like that the night before. Like it's, it's tempting to want to do that because you think it'll keep you fuller, but it's going to be that much more difficult to clean out your bowels. And, um, Honestly, like I think the more that you can clean them out like quicker, you might not have to drink as much of the prep. So that's kind of the payoff. To me, it's worth it to not eat very much for a few days if it means the prep goes way easier and smoother. To go along with that, I would also recommend starting the prep maybe one to two hours earlier than they say. Um, they'll say like if you're having your prep, sorry, if you're having your colonoscopy like very early in the morning or something to start at like six or seven o'clock at night. I would not do that, especially if you have like a very early check-in time and you want to like maybe get some sleep. I would not start that late, honestly. Like it doesn't really matter, I think. I mean, definitely check with your doctor like to make sure if, you, if you're planning on starting a few hours sooner, like just check with them that, that, that that's okay. But um, I really don't think it makes much of a difference if you start a few hours sooner than they say. Just because it might take you longer than you think to get the prep down. At least for mine with the soup prep, it's 16 ounces of the prep combined with like 8 ounces of water. And then you have to drink another 16 ounces of water in, in the course of an hour or something like that. I mean, it's a lot that you have to drink. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't taste very good. Like that doesn't help. So it's it might take you quite a while to get all of it down. So I if you think that you're not going to be able to really complete it quickly and you want to also be able to go to bed at a relatively decent hour I would not start at 6 or 7 p.m. I would probably I started mine at like 5 p.m. and it still took me a while so if you want to even start at like 4 p.m. or something like that you know again they'll explain all this to you but basically what you want like to know you'll know when your bowels are cleaned out when the color of your stool is clear yellow like urine if it's dark brown or orange, you're not cleared out yet. And bits of bile in the stool are also, that's completely normal. So like if you see little bits of stuff in there, that's totally normal. But like the, the end idea, like I think I was a little bit confused and I thought it, I thought they meant that what by clear yellow, I thought they meant it had to be like see-through. That's not what they mean. As long as it basically looks like, I mean, we've all kind of seen what like dehydrated urine looks like. It's just like yellow, but you can still like see through it. Um, as long as it looks like that, you're basically cleared out. You just don't want it to be, you definitely don't want it to be dark brown. And if it's orange, it means that you're like almost there, but you just have a little bit more to go. And everyone's bodies are different. So some don't need to drink much to be cleared out. Like me, I really didn't need much because I didn't eat very much beforehand. 
Um, and some people maybe don't need to wait that long before they start having bowel movements. Like every, every person's different. Like I talked to different people that had used Suprep and like some people said they didn't have bowel movements for like a couple of hours after drinking it. Whereas I had them pretty much right away. Um, I drank maybe a quarter of it before I started having bowel movements and I didn't even need to drink any water. Like I had had literally maybe like a fourth of the, the Suprep didn't even drink any of the water yet and I was like already starting to go. And as far as like how long you can expect to be on the toilet, I was on, like me personally, I was on the toilet for about 15 to 20 minutes at a time each time. And I was probably going like that for two or three hours. Like, I mean, it, it was, it worked like really well on me. But again, that's because like, I already have GI issues to begin with. Like it probably doesn't take much just for me personally, it doesn't take much as it is. And then, like I said, I didn't eat very much beforehand. So there wasn't a lot that needed to be cleared out. So it was like, it was working like immediately for me. And like I said, definitely bring in like some magazines or something with you each time you go in the bathroom because you are going to be going quite a lot and you might be on the toilet for several minutes at a time. So definitely having the magazines. Like I think for me, the whole night, I think basically the amount of time that I spent in the bathroom, I was able to get through an entire magazine and like by the next morning, half of another one. So that's, I don't know, like how you would measure that in time. But I got through one and a half magazines worth. That was how much time I spent. As far as tips to help the prep go down easier, this is probably one of the reasons you're watching this video is tips for making the prep go down easier. But nothing is really gonna make it magically taste good. I will say that. Um, but things that I did, like I said, sucking on a lemon wedge immediately after drinking the prep, like I didn't even... Like every time I would sip it, I didn't even like swallow it before I like licked. I would like lick the lemon wedge. Like I wouldn't even suck on it. I would like just straight like lick it just to like mask that aftertaste because it does have a really bad aftertaste. But the lemon wedge like really, really helped with that. And then I would also palate cleanse with a like a sip, a sip of ginger ale because some people find that ginger ale is a good um, like chaser. But if you have issues with uh, carbonated drinks, it might um, cause you like it might give you a lot of gas or whatever it might make your stomach feel fuller. And that's not what you want. So I was very careful and just limited it to like a sip, like a single sip of ginger ale just as a chaser. Some people do choose to mix a packet of crystal light or some kind of drink mix like that into the prep. But I didn't do that because um, the medical assistant that I talked to, she recommended not doing that because it might make it taste too sweet. Some people have made the mistake of adding Sprite into it and that made it really, really sweet. So like I would advise as tempting as it is to wanna like mix something in with it, I would not advise doing that just because it might make it taste even worse and then you're, you're stuck with it like that. So I would just have like a chaser rather than mixing something in with it. Also definitely chilling it and drinking it through a straw will make it go down easier. Like if you try to drink it without, like put, if you can put the straw more towards the back of your mouth, you won't taste it that much. Whereas if you drink it straight without a straw, like you're gonna taste a lot more of it. And it's definitely, definitely better when it's cold. I think they even like tell you to chill it beforehand because um, it's just gonna go down a lot easier that way. And the other thing too is like, I think a lot of people are naturally inclined to wanna drink it really fast. Like just to like, you know, if I drink, the faster I drink it, the more I won't taste it kind of thing and I'll get more of it down. But this is a mistake because what might happen is it might make you nauseous or it might even make you throw up. And then if you if you actually do throw it up, then you have like nothing left now and they might ask they might ask you to reschedule the procedure if you like threw up the prep. And that's not something you want to have to go through. So as tempting as it is to want to drink it really fast, don't do this because you might make yourself nauseous. I will say that if you do feel nauseous after uh, drinking it like that that's very normal to feel a little bit nauseous and to kind of have like a, a feeling of like a full stomach after drinking it that's kind of the point so that feeling will go away once you start having bowel movements but if you do feel like really really nauseous or you feel like you um you feel like you are going to throw up um take a break for about 30 to 60 minutes and then go back at it again and also the prep like this is another tip that i read online is that the prep works a lot better like don't don't sit down after drinking it. Like if you've had a little bit of the prep and then you're gonna go back to it, you know, in a few minutes or whatever, it's a lot better if you stand up and kind of move around a little bit because um, it like just works through your system a lot faster. Again, I wouldn't try drinking a whole bunch of it at once. I would just drink a little at a time and go back maybe in five or 10 minutes and have a little more and then go back and then, you know. Like I said, everybody, everyone's bodies are different. Some people might, have, might start having bowel movements immediately and some people it might take several hours. And so, 
like something that they recommended is to have Miralax on hand because it might help you in case you go like several hours without having bowel bowel movements. Um, like if like just several hours have gone by, like it's normal to maybe go like a couple hours or something like two or three hours without a bowel movement. But if it's any longer than that, then I'm not sure what's going on. But like maybe you're constant. It's definitely harder to do this if you're constipated. So like if you have chronic constipation, this might be a concern. So having Miralax on hand to assist, like just kind of help help it move along if it's not uh, you're, you're, you're not seeing anything come out yet. Um, or if you throw up some of the prep, you can still like, if you're able to keep down some of the prep, you might still have a chance to, like, clean out your bowels if you use Miralax instead. So as far as, like, my personal experience drinking the prep, I already said it was very disgusting, um, and then I started having bowel movements pretty much immediately, but basically for me, like, I'm a very small person, because, like, that's another thing people ask, is, like, if you're small or, like, petite, do you have to drink the entire two bottles of prep plus all that water they want you to drink? And they do say that you have to, but... Honestly, for me, I only drank a little more than half of the first bottle and about maybe one fourth of the second the next morning. And it was more than enough for me to get cleaned out because like I said, I did that prep beforehand where I didn't eat very much. So there wasn't much that had to be cleaned out. The color is, I think, more important than the amount that you drink. As long as you have no solid stool or brown or orange stool, then you're probably clear. They will probably ask you when you go for the procedure, they're probably gonna ask you if you were able to get all of it down and they'll probably be like okay well we'll see what we can do like we'll see if it was enough and if it's not unfortunately you're going to have to reschedule the procedure but like i said for me i didn't even drink that much i was going i, I started having bowel movements immediately and it was clear yellow from the beginning and i just kept drinking enough to make sure like okay i really like got myself cleaned out and they were able to do it with no problem so like if you're concerned about like i didn't drink enough like if you just were not able to tolerate it but you're going clear and you know your bowel movements are looking good um there is usually like a helpline you can call like your um medical office probably has like an on-call uh number where you can call them and say hey i wasn't able to drink like all of it, but this is what my bowel movements look like, they might be able to advise you about, yeah, we think you'll be fine. You can also call them like if you ended up like throwing up or something or like if you're having any concerns while doing the prep, you're like, I threw it up or I'm not sure if I had enough or whatever. There's usually like an on-call number that you can call and they can advise you from there about like if they think you'll need to reschedule or anything like that. So my procedure was like an 11.45 check-in time. So I had a later appointment as, you know, opposed to some people that are there like very, very early in the morning. Um, so I went to bed at like sort of my normal time and you know, you probably won't get a lot of sleep the night before just because either you'll be going to the bath, like you honestly won't, you shouldn't be going to the bathroom that much by that point, but you might have to get up like once or twice in the middle of the night. Um, so that wasn't really the issue for me, but I did have like stomach gurgling or, you know, like gas or whatever that might happen. Um, and also you'll probably be very nervous and anxious, so you might not get a lot of sleep the night before. But like I said, if you're worried about getting up in the middle of the night a lot to go to the bathroom, like, you know, if you're worried about like spending all night on the toilet or something, that that's not the case, or at least it shouldn't be the case. So getting to like the day of the appointment, I will say that the worst part, I mean, everybody says the prep is the worst part. Like it's not the actual procedure, procedure that's the issue, it's the prep is the worst part. So besides not eating all day, I was also told not to drink anything for four hours prior to the procedure like if you need to take medications um definitely check with them about like what medications you need to stop prior to the procedure or that you're not supposed to have the day of and um any medications that you can have like you have to have had it you know a couple hours or something prior to the procedure like de definitely check with them about anything related to medications um if you do need to take medications a couple hours prior they like allow you to have a sip of water with it but otherwise you're supposed to cut out like all liquids like even water you're supposed to cut out all liquids prior like four hours prior to the procedure so honestly not drinking anything for four hours that was very difficult for me because i was like really thirsty i mean as one would be it's like i haven't eaten anything all day and i'm also really thirsty so when you get to your appointment just make sure to inform the medical assistants of any medications that you took prior to your procedure just in case it might impact like the level of anesthesia or something that they need to give you so what happens on the day of the procedure is that they'll take you to put on a gown and they'll put ivs in you and they'll put a saline solution usually in you the anesthesiologist will come in and they'll just explain to you like you know, what they're going to do, essentially. Like, if you've had anesthesia before, then it's no different, really. Um, 
and then they'll bring you into the, you know, op op they call it the operating room, but they're not really operating, you know, they're just doing the procedure. They'll bring you into the room and they'll administer the meds to you and you'll fall asleep immediately. Like, basically what happened with me was they, they wheeled me into the room. It might be very cold, by the way, like it was really, really cold, um, but they should, you know, give you like a blanket or something. And they put an oxygen mask in my nose and then they told me, you know, to flip over onto your left side. It's always going to be your left side. Um, I guess that's just like the, you know, the best angle for them or something or the like way that they need to be able to do it. Um, so if you have an issue with like leaning on your left side, maybe make sure to tell them that and they might be able to accommodate you in some way. And so he said, flip over to your left side and he started putting, you know, the IV or whatever it was meds in me and I started to, he's like, he was explaining something to me. He was like, you might feel kind of like woozy or like, you know, you might feel, I don't even know, actually. I don't even know what he said because I was probably already falling asleep at that point. And I like, I start, I started to feel like, you know, he's explaining to me like what I'm going to feel like. And I was like, I'm starting to feel kind of tired. Like, I think I'm just going to close my eyes for this. And I, I leaned over and I closed my eyes and I was out. Like it's that, it's that quickly. Um, and like, you won't remember anything. Like I said, I don't remember what the heck he was even telling me anyway. And then like when it, you'll wake up, like the next time that you wake up, it will be over. When you do wake up, you'll most likely be pretty groggy because you're, you know, coming out of anesthesia and you're also probably going to have lots of gas. Um, because what happens is they fill you with a little bit of air during the procedure just so that they can like see better. Um, so having a lot of gas after is totally normal. Don't be afraid to like let it out. Like the, the doctors and the nurses around there, they see this kind of thing every day. Um, it's not going to smell or anything because you haven't eaten anything. It's, it's literally just air. So just let it pass and you'll feel a lot better. Don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed to just let it out. Like it's totally normal. And I guess it depends where you go. Like if they'll give you anything to eat after at my place, they didn't give me anything to eat. They just uh, asked if I wanted like a soda or anything. So I said I'd have a ginger ale. Um, so as I was waking up, I was just having a few sips of the ginger ale. That is another thing that I forgot to mention is that they will definitely make sure that you have a ride and like a ride share. You can't use a ride share unless you have a friend or family member to assist you or to accompany you. Um, and I, I'm not sure how public transportation works either. You might have to check with them about that, but basically you can't drive yourself home or anything, or like even if you were gonna get into an Uber or ride public transportation by yourself, they will not let you go home by yourself because you will be kind of like out of it a little bit. Um, so make sure that you have a trusted friend or family member who will be able to either give you a ride home or assist you like with a ride share or public transportation home. But um, if you've brought a per if the person is like there in the building at the time that you're done and they come and get them, they you you can have them come and sit in the room with you while you're waking up and everything, which was nice. You're also gonna want to want to take the whole day off of work, as if that probably wasn't obvious. Like, I mean, who wants to like go to work immediately after doing this? But you'll definitely want to take the whole day off, like the day prior while you're doing the prep, and then also uh, the day of. You're gonna want to take th those days off from work. Um, and you're not supposed to drive for the rest of the day. Like even if you wake up later and you're feeling relatively like your normal self again, you are not supposed to drive anywhere. Um, they also say you're not supposed to do anything. Like you're not supposed to operate machinery. You're not supposed to sign like legally binding contracts or anything like that. Just, you know, when you go home, just if you, if they didn't already give you something to eat, just, you know, have something to eat rest you're probably gonna want to take a nap honestly like that's what I did is I, t I slept for like two hours or something after that um you're you're, you're just gonna want to you're just gonna want to rest and relax and feel better and kind of get back on track and get back to normal as far as what you can eat afterwards like for the most part you can eat as normal following the test but it's probably best to eat light like some people say like oh I haven't eaten in a whole day I want to like get a Big Mac or something um I'm not sure that I would like get that but you know I I had um I had scrambled eggs and toast after mine and that was like enough for me um probably just like a sandwich you know or something like that um will suffice and they also should give you your results as well so like they just handed me my results in an envelope and you could see like all the pictures they took of the inside of your colon and stuff I will say that like I was saying before about how I was really glad that I did um, prep beforehand like I didn't eat very much so that it wouldn't be that difficult to clean out my bowels that ended up being worth it because I don't think they were kidding when they said this that uh, I had the cleanest bowels they had seen all day <laughs> so um, like they like I said I didn't even drink that much of the prep like I didn't drink all of it that I was supposed to and they were still able to do the test and it was like super clean they were able to see what they needed to see 
Um, all my results came back like normal and everything, just in case anybody's wondering, like um, all, my res all my results came back normal and fine. If there's a really big issue, your doctor will probably come and talk to you about it or they'll like call you the next day or something. And they should also call you the next day as well to just check up on you and see how you're like recovering and that kind of thing. Um, definitely if you're having any like weird side effects or uh, like they should warn you about what the side effects are but if, like if you're having severe side effects or like pain or something after like you should not have any pain um, like where they did the exam you should not have any pain or anything like that following it but if you do just be sure to let them know and uh, like if you're having any side effects like any adverse side effects or anything like that um, just be sure to let them know. Like I said, if your results uh, come back, like there's something that they found, they will definitely talk to you about it. But otherwise, they'll just give you, you know, the results and that will be it. So I would just say as a person who was like really, really anxious and nervous about doing this test, like I didn't know what to expect and I was very nervous and I really didn't want to do it, to be honest. But I figured I kind of had to go through with it to figure out like what's going on. Take it from a person who was really nervous about doing it if I can do it, then you can definitely do it. Like the prep is definitely the worst part. I like to call it a day and a half of suckiness between the not eating anything, can't have anything to drink even for like four hours prior and then doing the actual prep and being on the toilet and all those kinds of things and then like recovering afterwards and stuff. Um, it's definitely like an involved process, like a lot of preparation that you have to do. But I think it's definitely worth it. Like, I think I thought afterwards that I would do it again in a heartbeat as somebody who really didn't want to do it. I mean, I, I don't want to have to do it again for a very long time. But now that I know what to expect, it's really just the prep. That's the worst part of it. And if you do it well and you do it right and you take the time and preparation to do it, you know, well and properly, um you shouldn't have any issue where they're like, oh, we weren't able to do it and you need to cancel and reschedule or something. Like you, sh That was like something I was really worried about was like having to do it over again. If you've taken the right steps to um, prepare, that should not happen. And like once, you, once you're under, you've done your part and like you're, you're home free. <laughs> so overall, like I said, it's definitely worth it to do it, especially if you have GI issues that need diagnosing or like, you know, you could potentially have like Crohn's or something like that or if you need to test for colon cancer because um, they can catch those kinds of things early and they can remove polyps and things like that. And it's just honestly so much preferable to like if you actually ended up having colon cancer and having to deal with treatment for that. Um, it's, so, it's so worth it to do if you're having GI issues and you don't know what's going on, this is the way to diagnose them. But if you just focus on just getting your bowels cleaned and you have things to distract yourself like magazines, activity books, like little, you know, word search puzzle book kind of things or Sudoku or something like that. Like things to kind of keep yourself occupied when you're feeling hungry or while you're doing the prep to kind of like distract you and just focus on the end goal of like, I want to, I want to have the cleanest bowels that they've seen all day. And you want to have these picture perfect looking bowels and um, you know, you want to figure out what's going on in there or you want to like make sure you don't end up with colon cancer and that kind of thing. Like if you just focus on the end goal and why you're doing this, it will make it so much easier. And so like I said, take it from a person who did not want to do this, was very nervous, very anxious about doing this. And I was like, when it was over, I was like, I, I don't, wouldn't want to have to do that again, but if I had to do it again, now I know what to expect. And once the prep is all done and you're in there and you're under the anesthesia like it's a piece of cake after that and like it becomes well worth it to do it. So um, thank you for watching this video. I hope that these tips have helped you to prepare if you have to have a colonoscopy. And like I said, it sounds so much more daunting than it really is. It sounds scary, but like people do this every day and it's like a, you know, routine procedure in outpatient procedure that you'll be in and out in a few hours and you should be recovering as normal the next day like be able to go back to work and you know do all those things eat a normal diet and those kinds of things um at, like the next day um and you'll just have peace of mind knowing that like okay I don't have cancer or anything like that you know or like if they unfortunately if, if you do then at least they've caught it and you can take steps from there um it's just so worth it to do this test and like it's really nothing to be afraid of like just Think about the end goal and concentrate on getting yourself cleaned out and just pushing through and getting the test done so that because it's beneficial for your overall health. Um, so I hope that these tips have helped you and I like, kind of just put your mind at ease as somebody who didn't want to do this and like I was able to do it. So if I was able to do it 
and I had the cleanest bowels of the day, then you can definitely do it. So thank you for watching this video. Like I said, I've done other videos about GI tests and things that I've had done that I'll try to link somewhere for you to watch them if you're interested. So thank you for watching this and good luck with your test.